Hello everyone and welcome to the Catch Up Volume 13. It's your boy Ivor and Spice. I've got my two boys with me. I've got Amok. What are you saying today? Looking forward to this. A bit excited about this though. A mm -hmm. little bit. So yeah. And James, what are you saying today? You're right. I'm blessed, bro. Um, international break is finally coming to an end. So let the football begin. I'm happy. Yes, guys. And if you are new to the channel, please remember to subscribe, smash that like button, and don't forget to share to your friends and also your loved ones. Now, today, this week, of course, of course, it's international break, guys. And of, of course, there, there was a match to reflect on. But of course, we've got other things that we can discuss that happened during the week, including an international match, which is the England game versus Belgium. They are also playing today, but we can't discuss Denmark. that against Denmark. But yes, we move on. We were here straight up with what's going on with Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, guys. You know Oli's ass is on fire, like I said last week. His pants is on fire. He's actually stressed right now. I, I, I hope he is, because if he's not, boy, does he take his job serious? That's a question to ask everyone. But yes, um, as you know, guys, we have been in talks. Of course, Ed Woodward and his, calls, and his colleagues, I would say, have been in talks with Mauricio Pochettino to line him up. For replacement to replace Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, guys, I don't know if you guys have. I'm very sure you guys have seen the news popping up mm -hmm. over the weekend, yeah. especially regarding Oli. Um, my opinion of this, of course, as you guys know, I, I am Oli out as as always been. I've always been Oli out ever since I've seen that he he lacks a lot of quality as a top class manager. But for this to happen, I I can only see Oli probably ending. He's reign until probably about November. I'm not too sure. But guys, you know me, I would hope it to happen now. Now, because um, the time to sack him is actually right now, mm -hmm. you know, so he can bed in Poch. But if they want Poch to have an easy run, as I don't know. I don't think it's a good idea because by the time Poch comes in, it might be peak for us in the Premier sure. League. Sure. You know? Sure. That means Poch has to perform some miracles, you know? By the time he comes in. But I want to switch it up to my boy Mook. Um, what do you think of this whole situation? Are you are you liking this or of you want to go? I'm liking it. You see the grin on my face in that. <laughs> I've always been Oli out. I never, never said Oli in. From the very first day, I said I don't want this manager. It's just like, it's like me and, me and Bruno Fernandes seeing the same thing. Tactics. I watched him um, manage United for a few games. And I was like, no, his tactical ability is actually... Um, so that been like it just scares you and one thing that if i can emphasize a little bit that actually saved Oli and make him last this long is that as a as a club manchester united got very good players that have been always saving Oli, and i can mention one individual that actually helped Oli when he was under pressure because we had a very bad start of last season that's rashford he got all in penalties and he's got a few more goals so with that, I think Oli felt like, oh, do you know what? I've got a better chance. But him going out, seeing what I'm seeing in the media, every literally you go any media outlet, it's trending. And to be honest with you guys, I want Oli out. I ain't never been a fan. I don't like his football. And I actually hate... What is it about his football that you don't like? Oh, how, what, what can I say? <laughs> like, his football. For example... His like formations are alright, but it's just the tactics behind the formation. Like one thing that you mentioned a lot, because I've watched football with you all my life since we were young, you mentioned a lot. The players positioning when Oli fixes his team, mm -hmm. it's poor. You can see holes, that like spaces. It's easy. That's how our defense end up really bad, you know, because the positioning of our players don't help our defenders. And that's why we call Maguire trash. That's why we call Lendelof trash. That's why we call Bailey trash. Because the positioning and the way they go forward with the ball, it's all wrong. And that's one thing that I think that we need another manager that can come in and improve that. Like I said, Oli out, I don't Oli. I ain't never been a fan and I would never be a fan of Oli. So basically no tactics, guys. You know, these formations are, are crap. Play positioning are crap. Paul. Overall, poor manager, poor coach, as he as he just highlighted there. <laughs> and my boy Jay, what are you saying about this guy, bro? About the news that's breaking up, breaking in. Sorry. 
I felt it was great news. <laughs> we all wanted Poch initially. True. When Solskjaer came in, it was as a caretaker manager, standby. Just come in after Jose for the end of the season and then we'll look for another manager. But the board didn't want to spend money to get that extra man the new manager in. They wanted to stay, they wanted Oli to stay only because he's a yes man and he'll do as they say. True. But time is up, unfortunately. We don't want it to wait until the November, December, where we're, I don't know, 30 points away from the top, maybe 15 po points away from the top four. It will become Mission Impossible. So it's great news. I hope that he can get sacked soon. For me, Solskjaer was a legend as a player. These two don't agree with me, but he was a great player. But right. he's not a good manager, unfortunately. Not yet. As my boy Mook said, he can go off for an apprenticeship, maybe come back in five years. Once he's built up his CV, won some trophies elsewhere. Yeah, at good teams. At very good teams, yes. Not at Mom, not, not at Cardiff. Good teams on the high level. Yeah, of course. High elite level. teams. Good, great elite. teams. Elite. But to be honest with you, if Oli was to get sacked tomorrow, I can't see anyone in the Premier League even even signing him as a manager. Mm -hmm. He has to go somewhere else. Oli did, did not cut it when he was at, what was it called? Um, Cardiff. 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 got relegated. So what makes you think if... Like I said, we gave him the job based on sympathetic feelings in that. Or like, well, I don't know, you said they didn't want to sign new, bring a new, new manager, so they kept him because obviously he's the Mr. Yes Sir. He only does Yes Sir. But at the end of the day, I felt like they kept him because of financial reason. Yeah, of course. That's my one. Of the, that's one of the financial reason. That's another one, yeah. So now we, we... I don't think Manchester should be keeping people or players or managers for financial reasons. The club should always... Aiming for something big, something like it's a high top class club. Yeah. It's one of the biggest clubs in the world. Mm -hmm. So, how do you call yourself big one of the biggest club in the world? And we got manager that haven't won anything to show for. It's like buying Manchester United being a big mansion, a beautiful house, <clears throat> and then putting shit appliances inside. Exactly. <laughs> appliances that will break down at any time, you know? <laughs> The one thing I would say <laughs> to defend Oli, because I still have a soft spot for him in my heart, is if the board didn't back him with his transfers, <laughs> or if the board didn't back him with the players that he wanted, maybe, again, as I said last week, Poch could come in, and 12 months down the line, we could be in the same situation. I don't um, think so. No? No. Not at all. Because we've seen... Him, we, we, like what when I say stuff, I always go back with reference, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I've seen Poch go to Tottenham. Oh yes. But I've seen Poch when he got sacked and yes. poor run of form that yes. they And guess why he got guess why he got sacked? Because Tottenham refused to sign elite players or more players for two seasons. And apparently the the players himself was quite down off the So season. you get what I mean? Oh yeah, sure, sure, so sure. They didn't sign players. Back. They didn't sign that much players or elite players or big players. The Manchester more time plays, at least one or two three plays. But Poch did not get the opportunity. So and one thing I say Poch, I seen Poch coming to you on Manchester uh, on, on Tottenham, less than six months. They got his philosophy. Because and that's brilliant. That's absolutely true. Like um like one thing about Poch is that he made Tottenham from a club that probably finished sixth or fifth mm -hmm. to a Consistently top four team. True. For you to do that as a manager, it means that you're a manager that can improve what you have. And Oli has never shown any evidence that he can improve the team. He can improve some players, but he hasn't improved what he has. Like everyone is not consistent. Poch made sure that Tottenham are consistent playing attractive football. football. Everyone is fit and playing the football that you would like. But again, yeah. before he got sacked, we're we're forgetting this. Tottenham were very poor. They, they were, were they were poor. not good. I agree, I agree. That's the reason he got sacked. Yes. Only when he did come in, mm. fair enough, I feel like it was a bounce from the players. Oh, we've got a new manager. Jose's finally got, gone. Yep. They just took the shackles yep. off. However, Spot. Oli, from that PSG game, he had a good run of games. At the back end of lockdown, mm -hmm. he had a good run of games. Yeah, but before that yeah. lockdown, we was upset. Yeah, sure, sure. And Bruno the came and saved mm -hmm. us. That start of the season was upset. Towards the end, that first three months that we had after he was made permanent manager, mm -hmm. towards the end of that season, mm -hmm. after he was made permanent we didn't win. We hardly won, won any games. So we've had a mix kind of, um, what's it called? Um, Why down do we need a... But a lot of downs, more than ups. Why do you need a manager that always gave us one of the bad start of the season? 
We don't need that. We don't need that. We definitely don't need that, guys. Jesus is in today's time with us, but stop. Yeah, I, I'd say only to go, definitely. So, as I, as I keep saying, and what us getting said, a new player, a uh, yeah. new manager is not going to be the only fix for us. Yeah, we need much more than it we would really be. No, that. no, no it's a starter. Fixing, yeah. It's a good start, yeah. It's the yeah. start. It's a good start. Like changing the manager, I think, would change a whole lot of things. Because, so. like, what we've been saying about Oli, Oli's Mr. Yes, sir. So, we need manager that will stand up right. Because Poch believes in, his, in, his, in himself, believe in what he wants. And I've seen him going back and forth with Tottenham. Obviously, he got sacked. But the reason why he got sacked, because his team was not performing and Tottenham refused to sign him more players when he requested for players. How many players did, he, did Tottenham sign before Poch got sacked? I think one, one or two. One yeah. or two. And so, Dombele. And you get what I mean? I can't remember so, the second person. So, so, like, they did not really invest in the manager himself. Mm -hmm. And people say Oli did not get sponsored. No, he, that's not like. That's, over that's, 20 that's million. Oli got money. Manchester spent money on Oli. So we deserve better from what we've seen so far from Oli. Because Oli and Van Gaal got probably the same amount of money spent on them. So, well, I think Van Gaal did well. Even though we didn't win that much game. But he won us a trophy. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's a good thing. At least Arsenal could say we won the FA Cup. What, what can you say? <laughs> Been in a few semi-finals. We're only in it. Why go semi-finals? We need wins. We need Ws. Trust. Like only up, all day every day. How long do you reckon it will be until you get sacked? If I could be honest with you, like obviously it takes a while because everything. I would say probably two weeks from two now. Weeks. Wow. And Jake, what about you? I think it all depends on the run of games. Um, we've got hard games at the moment. We've got Newcastle. Well, Newcastle isn't really a hard game. It is, PSG, a hard game. it is a hard game. For us, for us, I guess. We've got PSG. Every team we play right now is a hard game. We've got hard PSG, game. Chelsea, and Arsenal coming up. So if he lose most of those games, he'll get sacked. He should get but sacked. If he keeps winning, just say he wins the next six games. I'm still sacking him. I'm still sacking him. Why the board won't? <laughs> no, but this they won't have to. Because, like I mentioned before, only got very good creative players that mm -hmm. would do the date for him. Mm -hmm. So why can't you bring someone that. I feel sorry for the players. Like, we've got someone like Mason. It's exceptional. It's a wonderful talent. I hate to see Mason on the Oli. I'm being honest with you guys. Oli don't deserve to manage our young stars. He ain't wow. got no experience. Strong statement. No, I'm being honest with you guys. Because, example, did we know about Dele Alli before Poch? Well, Just against Manchester. MK Downs when we got soaked 4 0. Yeah. Yeah. But rather than that, I didn't know who Ali was. Of course. But he so was Poch making came waves in, in the championship. Yeah. So to Poch came in. And bought him. Like, you see what I'm saying? He was young, given the opportunity to do what he does. Boom. Nice one. Nice starting player for England. But yeah, you're right. We do need a new manager. Definitely. Poch would be perfect. But let's just see what the board does. It's a waiting game now. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed, guys. I don't know if you guys let us know exactly how long you think. Um, what's his name? I forgot his name Ollie. briefly. So, which I don't know. Ollie. I already want him gone. I, re I already want him gone. That I actually thought his name already. Like, I thought he was gone. That's really but bad. yes, um, yeah, guys, let us know exactly how long you think Ollie's got until he gets the P45. You know, let us know. But we move on to our next topic. Of course, we've got Bruno, Mr. Bruno Fernandez himself. Of course, have you guys know during that um, spanking from Tottenham <laughs> half time? Of course, um, Bruno Fernandes himself had a few words to say to his teammates and also his manager. He questioned his teammates' um, lack of ability in terms of fighting and willing, telling them that this is not Manchester United. Also, questioned the manager's tactics, blaming his tactics that it's not good enough. And there are articles saying that Bruno has. Question whether Oli has the right mentality and the confidence and the leadership skills to lead a team like Manchester United. Mm -hmm. This is all over. And now we're in a situation where will Bruno be dropped? Will he play? You know, do you think Bruno was right? I, I agree with Bruno. If this is actually true, kudos to you, Bruno, because Bruno probably feels, yo, Oli, you're a fraud. You lied to me, you know, when I came in here, you know, when I wanted to say, you told me this was going to happen, this was going to happen, this was going to happen. But I realised, you're shit. 
You are shit. He is shit. Yeah. Jake, I'm gonna pass it on to you. Yeah. Uh, what did you think of all this whole Bruno situation, undermining the manager and telling the players that they need to grow some balls as well? I think uh, that was the only good thing to come out of that six-one defeat. True. To have a player that's only been here. How long has Bruno been here? Less than six months. Less than six January. months since January. January. Yeah, okay, more than six months now. Maybe a year. To have a player that's been in the club for under a year, doing it Roy Keane style in the changing room, telling man them what they've done right, what they've done wrong, 90% wrong in fact. Mm -hmm. I rate him. We need more players like that. True. If anything, at half time, everybody should have been fighting each other because it was true. not good enough. True, true. Why only Bruno speaking up? The one thing I would say against it, unfortunately, no matter how shit your manager is, I feel like as a sign of respect or not to undermine the manager in front of all the other players, maybe half time's not the time to say your tactics are shit or whatever else he may or may have not yeah, said. Yeah, but emotion was running that time. Of course, but still at the same time, I could think my manager's shit at work. I don't. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't say it in front of all of my colleagues because it just that's not how life runs. You need to have a one-to-one -one and then speak your mind. But in regard to the rest of the players, yeah, he had every right to tell them they were shit because they were. And I don't want to hear that all, uh, Fernandez is being dropped on Saturday against Newcastle because that'll just be rubbing salt in the wounds. And he's he the one that saved start. Oli from his job, you know. He needs to start. So you can't drop him. No. Now, Mook, what do you think about the whole situation? <laughs> You know, I just got laughed to this. You know, you need to see something in the media and blogs and stuff, yeah? You'd be like, I've always been right. <laughs> that's, that's my first reaction. I was right. Even today at work, I said it to um, the security guard. I said, I feel good. And he was like, why? It's because I've always been right about Oli. So for Bruno to do what he did, and I understand what Jake said, right? But from a fan, from a fan perspective, I'm really happy that we got someone that actually got the balls to say something after we got beaten so bad by Tottenham. Other people won't say nothing. I don't really care what Maguire did or nothing, uh, or what the other players did. But them knowing that they did something wrong, coming from a player that just came into the club less than a year, like we just mentioned. It's, I think any player that been wearing that vest for probably two, three years, should be ashamed of himself. Thank you. And Oli should be ashamed of himself as well. Because you, I can't call you a legend, but you're one of the <laughs> players that we always look up to to come off the bench and score goals for us, yeah. which you did a wonderful job for that. Back up, Tansa. <laughs> like, thumbs up to you for that. But Oli, don't you think you should be ashamed of yourself hearing whatever came from um, Bruno's mouth that day? Some, like... I'm getting emotional now. <laughs> like, really, chill, I'm getting emotional. Drink water, drink water. Yeah, like, just, just a water. Like, how are you going to have someone that had all these wonderful stories about the club and letting you lot know that this is not the club that I got told. This is not what I heard about this club. Let, that's showing more passion for this badge, that, that the badge of all support. Then, if, like, I can't, like, I'm losing words. Like, I don't even know how to express myself right now. I'm getting overwhelmed because he did that. <laughs> and thumbs up to you, um, um, Bruno. We love you for that because actually he spoke for all of us. He did. Yeah, he did. Like, really speak for all of us. What How? sort of players do we have in our squad, though? Because if, I hate to compare to the past, isn't it? But back in the day, if stuff wasn't going right, we'd hear the likes of Roy Keane speak out. Rio Ferdinand will come out. Gary and speak. Neville. G Neville will come out and speak. I'm sure Vidic would do his thing and say yes. as well. But who do we have now? Even ever used to do, talk. Do you know what, yeah? Who do we have? We do have players that wouldn't want to Bobba that. used to, but, but I, the fans I, turned against it. Not even that, I believe. The fans turned against Bobba, I, and now he just went quiet. I <laughs> really believe it's, it's, it's Manchester United board or whoever's a hierarchy don't want these players to talk. Because I remember one game where we got soaked, but I think by Newcastle and De Gea came out to speak. Yes. We lost the captain, captain back. Yes. Yes. I remember Pogba. On the Mourinho's, right? Pogba, the Mourinho. Yeah, yeah. He, no, no, I think it was, it was, it was last season, Oli, he said that this was not Manchester United because it was last season he started carrying the armband at the start of the season. Yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then you had Pogba as well that's had his, as we said, I, I can't speak fish, anymore. Fish, he yeah. even said that he can't <laughs> speak. So I, I believe that Manchester United players do really want to talk, but I believe that they are being controlled by the people upstairs to not talk. 
to not to not express themselves. That's why I truly believe. I believe there are leaders there, but they're tame to talk. They're hindered to talk. They're not allowed to complain about what's really going on behind closed door at Manchester United. And if you keep, if we keep entertaining that particular situation, we as Manchester United fans we will never see any progress coming from that team. Because, for example, we've seen Sergio Ramos back at Real Madrid. He'll cost on everyone from the top to down. He don't care. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's because when you love something, you're passionate. And when you're passionate, it's something different. It's a different feeling. Like, and that's how we, Manchester United fans, that's how we feel about that club. Sometimes I feel like we love the club way more than the owners. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, can, I can remember days that we lost certain games here. I can go... Turn off my phone, don't want to talk to no one. Probably sometimes I'll cry. Why am I crying over football? <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, guys, if you're hearing those noises, do apologize. We've got the neighbors upstairs being a nuisance and doing stupid things right now. But I do apologize for the noise that you're hearing. But yes, we've got straight up to Mr. Labile Pogba over the weekend with his Real Madrid talks again. Mon frère, tu me never. Arrête ça, Pogba, parce que, parce que j'ai tenu gâté ton nom. You're trying to ruin your name, bro. And Pogba, I'm French as well, so you know you understand. The French guys, I have ruined people, all the French speaking countries, they know exactly what I said. What I meant was that stop doing this, you will ruin your name. Like, there is no need for Paul Pogba to say, oh, it's ever been a dream to play for Real Madrid, but I'm happy at Manchester United. Do you know what that sounds like? That sounds like you telling your woman, Oh, oh, I've always dreamt about that and married that girl from next door. But you know, I love you at the end of the day, you know, I'm happy with you. That's an insult to us. You know when you oh, go to see crush. Yeah. <laughs> how, the, how can you say that? It's, every, it's, it's, it's my dream to pay for Real Madrid, but I'm happy at Manchester United. I want to help the team. Bro, stop acting professionally and just give them professional answers and saying that I'm happy at Manchester United. Of course, every player loves dream to play for Real Madrid. Madrid, but I also dream to play for Manchester United, and that's what I'm doing right now. But no, you're out here causing a stir. Now the media is all again started this whole Real Madrid nonsense. But I didn't read that Real Madrid have no interest in signing you, so stop it. It's just a rumor. Stop it, guys. Amok, let you, I'm gonna let you breathe for a second because yeah, I still feel like you're overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Jess, I'm what do you think about this whole this this pub, but What's he? Why? Just why does he need to do this? I'm over it. It's calm. We've had top players leave our club in the past. True. David Beckham left and we still went on and won the Champions League years later. It's all good. If Pogba wants to go, it's been rumoured for the last, what, two years now? For three seasons, I believe. Let him cut. January cut. Since his first Normally game. can't afford to buy Paul Pogba. Let's swap him for Varane. I heard a rumour or two that Romajid might be interested in a swap deal. Let's do that instead. We can't be holding players that don't want to 100% be at the club. And don't get it twisted. I don't blame Pogba. I don't blame him. Do you too. remember last season? Yeah. Yeah. When I told you the last game of the season, he went over to the fans, gave him their shirt, mm. and they were all booing him. Oh, yeah. Albeit, yeah, you sent me the video. Albeit, he was in the team 11 of the season. Season. Along and with a lot of the city players. Our highest, highest goal scorer. Would you stay? I wouldn't stay. I wouldn't stay. I wouldn't stay. He's got more goals than his strikers. Real Madrid fans are even worse. They'll boo you. You can have 20 good games, one bad game, and they'll boo you. So they'll, as long as Paul Pogba they'll knows They'll throw that, a banana at you, just to let you know. Banana skin, just like you. They'll stun you, just to let you know. They don't care. Yeah, they don't care. So, um, yeah, with this rumour, Paul Pogba, you're free to go, man, in my opinion. We can get better players in, or I say better players, we can get other players in and we can build from there. We can't have anyone that doesn't want to be at the club. Yeah, that's true. So we don't want no side remarks. Just be, say with your chest. If you want to leave, leave. You want to stay, stay. I love Pogba at the end of the day, yeah. But at the end of the day, for four seasons, I haven't seen the best of Pogba. So if, if you want to leave, you can leave because at the end of the day, he hasn't had that much of a major impact. As much as he's a good footballer he is, yeah, he has been inconsistent, you know. We won't really miss him that much because we won't we won't know what we've missed, to be honest with you, because we never saw it at Old Trafford. True. I'm going to quickly, let's, let, 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 let us know exactly what you feel about the whole Pogba situation. I'm not, done. I'm not really bothered about this situation because for some reason, I'm still confident that it's just a rumour and Pogba ain't going nowhere. He's still our player. Mm -hmm. And what he said, anyone can say that. People do say stuff like, we, we've heard like the media actually it's like a psychological stuff when you play FIFA they say oh 
everyone wants to wear the white kit. That's the Real Madrid kit, right? That's FIFA, though. Mm -hmm. You got that in the media saying every young player wants to play for Real Madrid. So you as a player growing up, psychologically, what's going to happen to you? You're going to find that team there, think like, you know, I want to play for that club because everyone's talking about that club. So obviously, he's a French he's a French man, right? And the team is managed by a French man as well, which is Zidane. And we don't know what's going on behind closed door. And they got friends they talk to. And you know, friends influence other people, the friends to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So for the fact that Pogba is still our player, I don't really care about what the rumor is saying. But Mook, when does this contract finish though? I think 2021? Yeah. Yeah, but I think they've done that extension. It's extension. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But okay. Do, do you remember I told you um um James like the other day? I said I don't mind. No, last season actually. Mm -hmm. I said I would sell Pogba in the yeah, Savage. Yeah, I remember you said. Do you remember? Because mm -hmm. the stress was too much. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in life when you're going through stress, even at home if you're a woman mm -hmm. or at work, take holiday. <laughs> like just push yourself together because mm -hmm. one little like wording might change everything for you True, yeah. for example you just said about Pogba got a professional and stopped talking if he didn't say what he said at the China interview this rumour will be coming up always when he's on international duty he feels like he can speak see. but yeah let's move on straight up um, we will look on the international scenes now we had England playing Belgium um, England beat Belgium 2-1 with a deflection shot by Mason Mount, of course. Uh, um, personal opinion of that match, England were, were pulling as well, slow as well. Um, lucky to win because Belgium had the better chances. Um, I, I, I'll be very honest with you guys, um, I'm not a big fan of, of Gareth Southgate and I honestly believe for England to move on to the next level, they need to ditch because watching England is like watching Manchester United. No way of playing, no identity. Tactics don't make sense. You're playing three defensive midfielders in midfield, can't create much. It's, it's a joke. And Mark Rashford, um, I'll be honest with you, the first half he was poor. He looked like he was just going through the motions. And of course, he scored a penalty. But he was poor. Maguire was okay, but then again, I'm just looking at our players. <laughs> Rashford was poor, and I'm I'm really tired of this. I'm I'm tired of people not actually pick, pointing out and picking out the fact that Max Rashford has been poor for a good five months, but still gets praised. Yeah, I, I respect the thing they does outside of football, but I don't care what you do outside of football. I watch football because you're a footballer, so I care about the primary thing that you do, your primary job as a footballer. So I'm not going to be saying I like this player because of what he does outside the pitch. No, I'm a Manchester United fan. I, I support you because you're a Manchester United player. So whatever you do on the pitch is what I care about. Now, Rashford, uh, I'm just tired of the fact that he doesn't get the criticism that he actually deserves. Uh, I think he feels like he's, I feel like he's just getting um, a free ride all the time. And he needs to know that he needs to improve. For himself. He really needs to know that. But apart from that, Gary Southgate needs to get sat for England to move up to the next level. Yeah, because England right now need a top quality manager that's got a tactics and a system for these players. I like the fact what Gary Southgate, when he first came in, he um he ushered out the, the old god to bring in a new god, bring in a new player. But now it's his time to go. Uh, what do you guys think about that match? I think, like you said, I believe in the first half, England were helpful, really, really bad. If Belgium was on point, they would have smacked England real bad. I mean, real bad. But Marcus Rashford, like you said, I still believe he had a very bad first half in this squad penalty. But during the second half, he was right a little bit. England, he came, was on, right the England came on top in the second half, though. I would give them that. They did play good because that's why they were able to contain Belgium and did whatever they did to get the win. But it's like, for example, Manchester United lost the game against Tottenham in the first half. So England got lucky, like you said, they got lucky. So you think about another another game, like a bigger a bigger platform, a bigger a, 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 a competition, like the World Cup or European or what's it called tournament. Do you think England will get what they got against Belgium like that? No, no, no. no. I see Belgium they winning. Win. This one, like you said, I I want to emphasize a little bit on what you said about the manager himself. I agree with you. The manager needs to go. 
Southgate needs to go. Because the reason why everyone was excited when he came in was because obviously he was the manager that managed these youngsters and he knew them like individually and he knew the ability as well, what they can do and what they can't. But we believe, I, I, this is like one of my favorite words, I believe in evolution, things changes all the time. Mm -hmm. And the football right now, it is, that's why all is struggling. I believe Southgate, if England was to go to the World Cup with Southgate or any bigger tournament, they would struggle. Because other managers improved themselves. Other countries got young. I don't say he's too young, but his tactical ability is sometimes, like Oli, you go question, why is he doing this? <laughs> and we don't want to question you, the managers, because obviously it's your job to do what you do. We believe every decision you take or make should be the right one, even though we humans, we tend to like you to make mistakes but you are putting in the position like he said you don't care about what Rashford does outside football you care about what he does in the pitch so if you got an opportunity to be a manager you got to make sure you take that opportunity with both hands hold it tight every decision you want to take or make make sure you're doing the right one not me James to be fair um it wasn't an entertaining game but not to be honest with you since maybe my early 20s, I've always known that England played dead football. <laughs> I've always known international football, international break. I don't really watch England too tough. I'm not it gave me a bit of excitement though when so, you started. With England, nah, not a great game, but I'm not surprised. <laughs> Southgate now, there are much better managers out there, more experienced managers out there. However, I feel like it's good enough for England. He took them to the semi-finals, albeit by 1-0, 2-1 wins, penalties, all of that. It's very hard to be an international management because when, once you have your players come back from their clubs or come in from their clubs, you need maybe a week or two to try and gel them in, fit them into a different system, different style. That's why international football, it can look a bit lethargic sometimes because the players are just trying to get to know each other, different players are select selected, etc. Sure. So for me, Southgate... There's no need to sack him right now. If he doesn't qualify for the next big European competition or the next World Cup, yeah. then you can sack him. If he doesn't get to the quarters at least in one of those big major things, then we can sack him. So you rate him? I don't rate him, but England, I don't rate England either. It's like, you know... Uh, England got a very good team, though. They got very good individuals. In, in, in Europe, they don't play together. In Europe, it's two teams. Exactly. That's, that's it's two why teams. I France, England. England. That manager. It's just like this. But listen, with team cohesion, mm -hmm. you need weeks and weeks. With international football, it's different. Yeah, but... It's different, you know? Most international teams, they would have that same group core players that's been playing together in international scenes for a good year or two Gee. before they go to the international, um, international tournament. Did you forget Belgium had to build a new team? That's why sure. Belgium is that good. But Southgate, even Southgate England, still building even well. England build a new team. Yeah, yeah, but France have to build a new team. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. this guy, England with England building new teams. This guy brings it's in the decision making, the like we said before, it's the decision making, the tactical ability. I think it's a hard job because you do have a pool of players. You need to look at everyone, or need to at least have a look at twenty-two players, two players for each different position. Mm -hmm. If you don't have time to do it, then I don't know. I don't know. I don't really care. I just Not to be rude, I don't really care for England that too, that much. But Southgate, if he doesn't qualify, then sack him. But right now, there's no need to sack him. All right, guys. Speaking of Mark Rashford, Mark Rashford won the MB, uh, was awarded the MBE by the Queen. So he's now an MBE. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, due to the the community, the things that he's done behind the in, the in the community, um, saving. I kudos him. Let's clap for him. Kudos, kudos to Mark Trafford, you know, helping out the poor kids, the poor families that struggle to feed their kids be, um, before before they go to school or during lunchtime. So he's ensured that kids around the UK will get that free school meals. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's done, he's done a lot of charity work during the whole lockdown as well. So kudos to him. Um, um, it's, it's nice to see a black man do all of these things, you know. Definitely. We are black, um, of course, like I said before. I've got no agenda towards Mark. He's my boy at the end of the day, mm -hmm. but I still want to see the, the best out of him on the pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah? He's good, though. But I'm happy he's for him. Player. I'm happy for him. I'm, I'm glad he's done all that stuff, you know. I'm glad he's getting that MBE award and being recognised for the hard work that he's done outside football. Well, well done, Rashford. Um, 
when, at a time, let's not get political, but at a time where the government said no, mm -hmm. didn't want to help out his own people, R Rashford was there to step in and he done the job. Well done, Rashford. In regards to the MBE <laughs> from the British Empire, let's not get too deep into that, but yeah. who cares about the MBE? That's, yeah. that's nothing. What do you think about his award? I don't think he deserves it though, because yeah. like I said, she few people in my neighborhood are them on the TV because of Rashford. So mm -hmm. I think he deserves it, and not just because of what we ex what we seen, but it's a bit it's in the bigger picture like you mentioned. So during this lockdown, some people actually struggled to feed themselves for their families and stuff. So for you to have one individual who pull like willing to pull that string, make sure like communities are okay and kids are getting what they always get from school even when they're staying at home i believe that was a very good thing like a humanitarian thing to do and f f for that rashford thumbs up we love you for that i really appreciate that like i know i've seen enough like because uh, the same things we can't say but thumbs up to you for that <laughs> a thumbs up to you and what's it called again when i would say emphasize a little bit we don't really care about what you do outside football. We care about what you do in the pitch. But you having this award, just for example, like I've got a younger brother. He's got a younger brother. He's got younger sisters. These are things that I believe our younger um, generation should look up to you and mm -hmm. want to be that person. You get what I mean? Like we always try to uh, try to replicate what we see other people do. Like good things, no bad stuff though. The good stuff, and this is brilliant. Really brilliant. Definitely. Yeah. And then, guys, to wrap up the show, we have Newcastle this Saturday. <laughs> guys, remember, it's a Ooh. late, late kickoff. I believe it's at 8 p.m. on Saturday on Sky Sports, of course. Ooh. Predictions, guys. Um, Ooh. Not confident at all after what happened to us against I'm Tottenham. not confident either. That's what I'm saying. Newcastle at, 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 their, at their home. What's what? Bloody hell. Hey, I they thought what their stadium is called again. St. James's, St. James's Park. Park. Yes. And they got very, they had a very good start already to the league. I can see us losing. My prediction, we will lose. We will. Lose. I don't know what the score is, but we will lose. What's your prediction? Because we need to end this show. I think we lose too. Mm -hmm. And Jake, what do you think? Always positive draw. He's a, he's positive. He's positive. As long as Maguire don't start, Maguire needs to cut. He will start. Get on the bench. One of Oli's boys. He's one of Oli's boys. If he starts, the Oli gets sacked on Sunday then, because Maguire don't deserve to start. To be honest with you, under this Manchester fan that hit me for this. I'm just, I'm just saying this because I love the club too much. But I hope we lose to Newcastle so only get sacked. <laughs> All right, so we have reached the end of the show. Thank you guys for watching. And of course, always remember to subscribe, to share, and smash that like button as always. And let's just end it with Amok. Please give us your <laughs> socials where you can find it. And don't take that long. Uh, last time. You can find me on Instagram, isn't it? Pretty Flaco underscore sixteen. Yes. And that's it, yeah? Yeah, my, I told you like... We don't Snapchat. want to know anymore. We don't want to know anymore. I don't, don't, want, to know want, to, I don't want to say my Snapchat. Uh, yeah, it's all right, it's all right. And Jax, um, what do you have in store for us this week or where we can find you? <laughs> you can't find me. You can't find me. You can't, can't find me. <laughs> You'll find him next week on the show, of course, as well, guys. Remember to, sus to subscribe to the channel. You can follow me on my personal Instagram account, which is Avarin's underscore Spice. And then you can just remember to follow the official account of Red United TV. On the road to 4K followers, remember that's Red United TV 1, as always. You can also follow my Twitter account, which is Aaron School Spice. Remember, guys, as always, keep it united if you can. And remember to keep it Red United. And, guys, we are out. We see you next week.